So function spaces, LP of R, L2 of R. So we've seen in the previous uh, lessons uh, the definition of uh, CC of R, which is the set of function from R to C, complex number, uh, such as F is continuous and as a compact support, okay? Um, moreover, C0 of R is the continuous set of function, so the set of function from R to C, uh, where F is continuous and uh, uh, F of X uh, goes, goes, tends, goes to zeros when X tends to, goes to, to, to infinity. So I represent uh, some, some functions. So they are from they have, they have a compact support here. At a certain point, f is going to zero, okay? After a certain point, um, f is going to zero. So now we will define uh, the set of LP of R, where P uh, is superior to one. Uh, it's defined as the set of function from R to C, okay, complex number, such, such as uh, the integral uh, from minus infinity to infinity of the absolute vo value, the absolute module of fx at the power of p dx, okay, is is bounded, so it's less than infinity. So this integral is convergent. Um, mainly, it means that the integral, this integral, is convergent. Okay. So now there is a theorem for p from uh, from p from one to infinity. Okay, whatever p you take, L p of r is a Banach spaces which respect to the norm that, that I define here. So which respect to this norm, okay? So what is this norm? It's the FP norm, the P norm. The P norm of F is defined as the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the absolute value of F of X at the power P dx, the, the wall at the power one over P, okay? I just remind you uh, some, some properties quite important there. Uh, we have the norm of V, which V is, is a function of, of this vector space. I remember you that this vector space we are dealing with is the vector space of function, okay, uh, that are convergent for the, the LP norm, okay. This is the set of function that are convergent for the LP norm, okay. L is, is uh, referring to Lebesgue, Lebesgue, Lebesgue integral, because you have Riemann integral and Lebesgue integral. This, this, is, this is the LP norm defined for Lebesgue integral, okay. And the, the norm of V is, uh, is a, of, of vector, of certain vector is equal to zero, means that this vector is the null vector, okay? Then we have also this two, this two, this, this first equality and this inequality. The first one is the norm of alpha V, where alpha is a complex number, uh, is the module of alpha um, multiplied by the norm of V. And we have the triangular inequality, which say that the norm of V plus W is always less inferior to of the sum of the norm of V and W, okay? So there are some advantages and some disadvantages. First, the um, CC of R, the compact sub, the, the functions that have a compact support on the R, uh, we make the assumption of compact support and it's, some, it's in some way realistic for application, right? But CC of R is not a Banach space but not all functions are continuous in CC of R. Then for C0 of R, the set of functions that continues uh, on, on, on the real space, is a Banach space um, with respect to the norm, with respect to the infinite norm, now, okay? You remember the infinite norm, which is the, the max or the sup of f of x for x describing the interval, okay, we are speaking about. So not all functions are continuous. Then um, we have also L1 of R, L1 of R, is a Banach space with respect to the norm, the norm one that we, we just we defined in the previous section, certain function that are not continuous. Okay, if we take this function, okay, we clearly see that this function is equal to zero up to a certain point, is equal to a constant, let's say one, uh, from, from in this interval and then zero. We, we see that at this, this level, there is discontinuity, a very huge discontinuity, and at this level also. So some function that are integrable, this function is integrable because it's only there are this function is integrable on uh, on R because from minus infinity to plus infinity, we see that the the integral is bounded. It's only the, the R of this uh, rectangle here that I'm designing with my mouse. Okay, so this this uh, this is a Banach space with respect to the norm uh, the norm one certain function that are not continuous. So this is this could be a problem in a way. So but L one of R is not a, a bare space. Okay. Which, uh, why, why speak about CC of R, C0 of R? But, you know, the idea is that all functions in LP of R 
can be approximated by function in CC of R, okay? So this means uh, sub substantially that CC of R is dense in L1 of R. So there is the notion, the notion of density, okay? So each CC of R is dense in L1 of R means that whatever function of L1 of R you take, this function could be in a way approximated by uh, by a function in CC of R. This is the notion of density, you know, the density of your space. So for any function f belonging to L1 of R, then for any epsilon strictly positive, there is one function g belonging to CC of R, such as such that the difference um, uh, for the norm 1 of f and g is less than epsilon. This is the meaning and this is the way you you say that uh, that uh, a space is dense in another space. So here, in, in, our, in our case, in our situation, CC of R is dense in L1 of R, which means that every function uh, of L1 of R can be approximate, okay, by a function in the space CC of R, which is exactly what is written here over there, you know. For any L belonging to L1 of R, there, there, then for any epsilon strictly positive, there is a G belonging to CC of R such that the norm 1, the norm 1 the, of the difference between F and G uh, could be less than epsilon, okay. So then there is the topic which is the approximation theory. Uh, I will speak about this topic later, in, in, a, in, a, in a later video, probably. So I recall you that uh, a, what is an Hilbert space, okay? An Hilbert space is a vector space with a Niner product, okay? This is the definition and this is the way we, we note, we write the Niner product, okay? Niner product between two vectors, which is a Banach space, okay? with respect to the norm, the norm of V, which is the square root of the inner product from V with V with itself, okay? So I recall you the definition of the Albert space and you have to, to have it clear in mind, okay? So Albert space is a vector space with inner product, which is a Banach space with respect to this norm, okay? And this norm can be deduced from the, the inner product in this way. So, in that sense, L2 of n, and natural, is an Hilbert space. Now, there is, now comes a theorem. So, L2 of r is an Hilbert space with respect to the norm that I just defined here, which is the scalar product between f and g. The scalar product, the inner product of between f and g uh, is the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of f of x multiplied by the complex conjugate, the complex conjugate of g, g d of x, okay? And this this theorem is very important in an Hilbert space. I don't know if you're doing some only mathematical stuff, but if you're doing, you know, some kind of physics, and especially if you deal with quantum, with quantum mechanics, this is the way uh, the inner the product is defined in quantum meta mechanics with the wave function and uh, we use it all the time, okay? So let's prove them. So first show that uh, the inner product between f and g is well defined, okay? Indeed, uh, the uh, if we take the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of the absolute value of the absolute module, okay? If uh, f and g have, have uh, their um, uh, space, their image in, in, in C, okay? So the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of the absolute value of f of x multiplied by the complex conjugate of g d of x could be, uh, this is the older inequality, I'll remind you, we, you take p equal q equal 2. Let's see my previous videos uh, if you don't remember the older inequality. So, but we apply here the, the older inequality with p equal q equal 2. So this can be major, can be, can be a, a major, yes is inferior to the product of two integrals. So the first one is the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of the absolute module of f of x uh, square dx at, at the power one and half. And the second one, and this is a multiplication of course, is the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of the absolute module of g of x at uh, <coughs> square dx, the wall at the power one and a half, okay? So, so this is uh, well defined because this belongs to L2 of R and this belongs to L2 of R, okay? S so this integral is bounded, okay? So this integral is convergent. 
So now for f, g, and h belonging to L2 of R, let's take two scalar, two complex number, alpha and beta. Let's call them alpha and beta. And uh, first, uh, <clears throat> if we, we, we uh, try to uh, decompose the inner product between alpha f plus beta g and h, it's the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of alpha f of x plus beta g of x, the wall multiplied by the complex conjugate of h of x, the, the x, okay? Now, from passing from this line to this line, you know, uh, you see that alpha and beta are are a complex number that does not depend on the, the variable of integration dx, so they get out of the integral. Then I use the, the linearity, of course, of the integral, okay? And uh, I have that, so this inner product is alpha from the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of f of, of x, complex conjugate of h dx plus beta integral of minus infinity of plus infinity g of x for, for, for multiplied by the complex conjugate of h of x, okay? And this is nothing less than alpha multiplied by the inner product between f and, R and h plus beta multiplied by the inner product between g and h. And this is what we wanted to uh, demonstrate for the first uh, for the first equality. Then let's demonstrate, uh, let's demonstrate, you see, you see it very easily that the inner product between f and g is the complex conjugate of the inner product between g and, a, and, 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 a, and f, okay? I remember you that for two vector v and w that belong to an Albert space, we always have this inequality, which is the, which is the, <clears throat> the, Inner product between v and w is equal to the complex to the complex conjugate of the inner product between w and v. Okay. Now, for the third inequality, we have to show that the inner product between f and itself is always positive on uh, on here. And of course, uh, when we pass this inner product, we obtain, we obtain the, the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of the module of f of x square dx, and this is always positive. Okay. Obviously, and then <clears throat> if the, the inner product between f and itself is equal to zero, zero complex number to zero of the real number of the complex number, then the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of module of f of x square dx equals zero. Okay, so it it means that f of x is is the functional. Okay. So uh, L2 of R is a Banach space with respect to the norm, the norm 2, that I remind you the definition, the norm 2 of F is the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of the absolute value of F of X at the power of 2, the X, the wall at the power of 1 and a half. And we can derive um, the norm of F from the inner product, okay? This is very important in the calculus. So the norm of F is the Inner product between f and itself at the power one and a half. So there are some problems that occur. LP of r is not an Hilbert space for p different of two. Then uh, we are going to speak about operation on L two of r. I recall you that uh, let t um, an operator uh, which is bounded and linear. Donc, from L2 of R, we take a function from L2 of R and, and give us back, uh, give us a function from in L2 of R. We define the adjunct operator T star, okay, which is the adjunct operator. If you don't remember what is an adjunct operator, that is my previous video about adjunct operator. Watch, watch, watch her, watch it. So, from an Hilbert space to another Hilbert space, that goes from L2 of R to L2 of R. So, I remember you the definition. This is the definition of the adjoint of T, which is T star. If T star is, is the adjoint of T in the Hilbert space we are speaking about, then the inner product between the operator T applied to the vector V and the vector W is equal to the inner product between V and T star of V, T star, the operator T star applied to W. This is the definition of the adjoint operator, right? So, in this op let's see that uh, we see it uh, there that uh, TF, the other product between TF and G 
is equal to the inner product between f and t star of g, okay? Indeed, the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of tf of x multiplied by the complex conjugate of g of x dx is equal to the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of f of x multiplied by the complex conjugate of t star of g of x dx. So t is self-adjoint if t is equal to t star. T is unitary, I remind you, if t, t star is equal to t star t is equal to identity. So now we are dealing between LP and L2 spaces. So we have three classes of operator on L3, on L2 of R. I will define some operators that are very useful here in this lesson, but we use them all the time in quantum mechanics. So for A belonging to R, the translation operator is defined as T and T with the uh, contravariant in this A, which, which goes from L2 of R to L2 of R, such as that the operator T and this A of F applied to X is equal to F of X uh, at the point X minus A. Okay, this is the translation operator. Then I will define the modulation operator. So, so for B real, the modulation operator is defined as, okay, let's call, uh, call it in, the, in, uh, in this variant B, from L2 of R to L2 of R, such as that AB of F applied to X is equal to exponential 2 pi IBX F of X. Okay, this is the modulation operator. Then we define the dilation operator. Okay, dilation operator for constant C is strictly positive is defined from L2 of R to L2 of R, where D and this AF apply to the at the point X, okay, in our space is equal to 1 over the square root of C multiplied by F at which point? At the point X divided by C. This is the dilation operator, right? So now there is a lemma that comes from that. The operator that I just defined, TA, EB, DC, are first well defined, then linear, then also bounded, and finally they are unitary, okay, which means that T, T star equal T star T equal R. So now let's prove from uh, for TA this uh, ascension. So for the first one, well defined, we must show that if F belongs to L2 of R, then TA F belong to L2 of R, right? Okay, so the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of the of the module of TIF of x uh, <clears throat> power 2 dx is equal to, according to TF, I just sub su substitute uh, TF by uh, in x by its value, which is fx minus a, which is equal to this to this integral, which is the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of the absolute module of f at which point x minus r square dx. So then we make uh, some very simple uh, uh, changing variable. We change variable. We 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 say that y equal x minus r. So the differential differentiate of y is equal to the differentiate of x, and this integral is equal to the integral. Of course, when x goes to minus infinity, x minus one goes to minus infinity. When when x goes to plus infinity, x minus one goes to plus infinity. It doesn't change the the boundaries here of the integration. So it's integral. It's so this integral by using this change of variable is clearly equal to the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of the absolute value of f of, of y at the power two dy. So it it clearly means that the operator translation that I just defined mention T A of phi belong to L two of R. Okay, which are the function of uh, of um, Integrable at the at the at the square, right? Okay. So now two. Let's prove that uh, t is linear, right? Okay, t is linear indeed. T a of alpha f plus beta g, where alpha and beta are complex number, f and g are the function of a vector space of Lb space, apply at the point x is nothing less than the, by the definition of t a alpha f plus beta g 
apply at which point at the point x minus a because here is the translation operator from uh, of of a the translation of a right but this is uh, by using the linearity of the operation alpha f at the point x minus a plus beta g at the point x minus a so which is nothing less than alpha alpha multiplied by t a the operator t a um, at the, the for the function f at the point x plus beta which is scalar number okay multiply by the the operator t for the function f apply at the point x right so we just demonstrate in two lines that t a of alpha f plus beta g is equal to alpha t a of f plus beta t a of g right so the the operator t a is linear so now let's demonstrate that it's bounded so t a is bounded indeed Fact. If we take the 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 module of T A alpha f at the power of two, would it's it's equal to the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of the absolute module of T A f in the x at the, at the at the power of two differentiate on x, okay? Which is equal if we substitute T A f on x by it, by its definition by by its value. But it's equal to the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of f at which point x minus a square differentiate x, okay, which is equal to the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of f of y so the square dy, which is the norm of f and the square, okay, and the norm of f square is less than infinity so it's bounded because because why because f belong to l2 of r right so t alpha of f is bounded it's an isometry then then t is unitary we see that t t star equal t star t is equal to one okay we just demonstrate it now so first we must calculate t t s t s star Okay, so we have the inner product between T i f and G is equal to the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of T a of f in, at the point x multiplied by the complex conjugate of the function G at point x multiplied by, by the differentiate of x. So this is equal to, we substitute T a of f by, by its value, which is f of x minus a, which is equal to the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of f x minus a, okay, multiplied by the complex conjugate g of x, differentiate of x, which is equal to the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of f of y multiplied by the complex conjugate of g at point y plus a dy. Okay, we just make the the, the changing uh, here y equal x minus a, so dy equal dx. The the integral doesn't change here x equal to y plus a, and uh, we see that x minus y equal y. Okay, we just change by by making the change of variable that it's obvious. Okay, so this integral at the end, what we see it's the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of f of y multiplied by the complex conjugate okay of what of of t minus y minus a t minus y minus a of y of g of y see t minus y here because it's y plus a not y minus a okay so at the end at the end we see that this integral is nothing less than the inner product between f and t a equal of g okay I remember you the definition of an adjoint operator. An adjoint operator is such as t, the inner product between T V and W <coughs> in the elder space H is equal to the inner product between V and T star of W in the inner product K, whatever vector in your vector space K. So we have here clearly that T A star is equal to T, to t minus A. Okay. Now we must show uh, that t t star is equal to t star t is equal to identity, right? So we have t and this a multiplied by t and this a star the, of f applied at the point x is t a multiplied by t minus a f because t uh, 
star f is this from is this operator right applied upon x but ti multiplied by t minus a f is the identity so so it's the identity upon and upon x the identity of f so which is f of x so by geometrical by geometric argument we just uh we, we just show show that uh, the operator t minus a of f apply at the point x minus a is equal to f at the point x minus a minus minus a which is f of x okay so uh t a t s ter is equal to identity and similarly we have t s ter t t a is equal to t minus a t a which is equal to i okay So I will now uh, give an example of the momentum operator, okay, that uh, is the momentum operator in the quantum mechanics. So P uh, is an operator from L to of R to L to of R, such as P of F is equal to minus I, so the complex number I, such as I square is equal to minus one. So minus I multi multiplied by H bar, H bar is the, co the Planck constant, which I give you um, the value, which is for your knowledge, approximately 6.2.8 6.28 10 at the power minus 34 multiplied by df okay the, the differential of the of f respect to dx okay so the first derivative of f respect to x if f is only a function of one one uh, uh, one variable x okay so uh, the problem is that p is not well defined not all functions in L2 of R are differentiable, right? Uh, you need to be differentiable um, to define this, this uh, operator, okay? That, apply, that is applying to a function. So this, this operator is applying to a function that is differentiate, differentiable. If this function is not differentiable, you can't, you can't have this operator. It, it has no sense to write this, right? So, and even if um, DF with um, respect to DX uh, exists, it might not belong to L2 of R, right? So let's uh, consider the V, the vector space, okay, the following vector space. So I define V, the, the vector space, which is the set of function belonging to L2 of R, such that the differentiable exists. So the DF respect to DX exists, and the, the differentiable uh, DF of respect to DX belong to L2 of R, right? And of course, F of X goes to zero as X goes to infinity. So now our operator P is uh, still the operator of, from V to L to of R defined like P of F equal to minus I multiplied by the, the constant H bar, which is the, the Planck constant, uh, approximately 10 at the power of minus 34, 30, 34, right? Multiplied by the differentiable of X, okay, DF, DX. So the problem is that P is not bounded, right? So P is self-adjoint. We see that P uh, is equal to P star. Uh, this is physics, but you can see that P equal to P star. And it does not make sense uh, here if is to write this if P uh, is unbounded, right? But if you uh, calculate the inner product of PF between PF, P of F and G, Okay, so two functions belonging to the vector space I just defined, I just mentioned. You obtain that it's the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of P of F at the point X multiplied by the complex conjugate of G of X, but the differentiate of X, which is uh, equal to, if we substitute P F of X by its value, the integral minus infinity and plus infinity of minus I h bar h bar the constant of planck the differentiable of x the f the differentiable of f of x multiplied by the complex conjugate of g of x multiplied by, by the differentiate takes okay so we make uh, an, an uh, integration by parts okay you know integration by part and so this integral is equal to minus i h bar f of i g of x calculated between minus infinity and plus infinity minus the integral between minus infinity and infinity the minus i h bar f of x multiplied by the this time the complex conjugate of g prime of x g prime of x is d dg of the of um, 
over dx, which is the differentiable of x, the differentiable of g, okay, uh, respect to x, differentiable x. So this is this is clearly equal to zero. Why? Because f and g belong to L two F R, so they are uh, uh, they have a compact support. So if they have a compact support at certain point, they are they are equal to zero. Okay, so a fortiori at infinity and minus infinity they goes to zero. It, uh, and uh, this integral, okay, is so this this so this final product at the end, the final product between p f and g is equal to this integral which is the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of e h bar f of x multiplied by the complex conjugate of g prime of x, okay? The x. So this is equal to, it's just, uh, so we we, uh, we make the e h bar inside, inside the complex conjugate, so we take the opposite of i, and uh, so this is equal to the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of the complex conjugate of what? Of the minus i h bar multiplied by g prime of x, okay, dx. But this complex conjugate, it's the complex conjugate of what? Of the operator p applied to the function g at the point x, right? So this is the integral between minus infinity and plus infinity of f of x multiplied by the complex conjugate of the operator p applied um, at the at the apply at the function g at the point x differentiate of x which is nothing less than uh, the inner product between f and the operator p applied to g so we just demonstrate that p star equal uh, p star is equal to p okay we just demonstrate that the inner product between p f and g is equal to the inner product between f and p g so we should have been between f and p star of g, but p star of g is p, so p star is equal to p. Okay. So now let's go uh, a little uh, ahead respect to what we've seen so far. So uh, I remember you that we just defined the translation operator t f of x, which is f of x minus a, e b f of x, which is uh, exponential, bon, e, e, to pix f of x, the, which is the modulation operator. Okay, it's not quite near, but you have it. And the dilation operator for c strictly positive, which is dilation operator applied to f in x. It's one over uh, square root of c multiplied by the function f at the point x over c. Okay. So now we are speaking about some wavelet. Okay. Uh, the wavelet, which are the set of d, uh, g of tk applied to psi for g and k belonging to the integers. We have t a e b of f, the function obtained by letting uh, t acting on the function e b of f. So we have two ways to calculate. We have to calculate e b of f, which is e b of f of x, which is the exponentiation of 2 p i b x multiply by the function f at the point x and if we apply t a we, we obtain t a so we can apply an operator to another operator at the function right so we apply t a both on the left and the right of the of, of the of the equation and we obtain so t a of e b of f at the point x is equal to exponential exponentiation of 2 p i b at the point x minus a, because we apply the operator t a translation one, but uh, multiply by f at which point? At the point a, x minus a, right? We can also start by the action of t a, the translation operator, okay? And uh, say that uh, we apply t a at what? At the operator e b f of x, okay? Which is quite the same. So we have e b of f at point f minus minus x, which is the exponentiation of 2 p i b at point x minus a multiplied by the function f calculated, evaluated at the point x minus a, right? So now uh, for calculated a b of t a of f, right? So here we have two operators. We have the modulation operator. Uh, uh, we, we apply first the translation operator and then the modulation operator, right? E b t a or f of f 
first you apply TA of F, then we apply eBay to the result of that. So for the first one, so let's calculate TA F of X, which is F of X minus A, and we act with eBay, and we, we calculate now the modulate, the operator modulation with B as the as the coefficient of modulation. eBay of TA F of X at the point X is equal to the exponential sum of 2 pi for, multiply i b at point x minus a multiplied by the function f calculate evaluated at the point x minus e okay we can also start by 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 the action of ebay and we say okay ebay of what of trf of x so we have exponential 2 p ebay x at which point at the point trf of x which is um, infinite exponential of 2 p a b of x at which point at a calculated evaluated at the point x minus a so here comes uh, some suggestion always use the method two uh but always it's better because this is the, the that is start with the action of the operator to the left okay so now lemma we've got uh, we've got an interesting lemma which is this one so ta apply at ebay apply at the function f at point a is equal to 2p i b at point x minus a multiplied by the function f related at x minus a okay but yes so this is this is this but this is different of ebay of ta apply f of x okay because here you, you apply first ta f of x and you play eBay, which is exponential 2PIBX of TA of, of X, which is exponential of 2PABX multiplied by F of AX minus A. So we clearly see that this operator does not commute. Okay? Uh, and if we calculate this at the end, it's exponential minus 2PIBA multiplied by exponential 2PIBX multiplied by the function F at the point evaluated at the point x minus a which is infinite exponential minus 2 p a b a multiplied by the the operator modulation e b applied to the translation operator t a at, at the function f evaluated at the point x okay so there are some kind of problems here and we are going uh, to to go ahead so let uh, consider h uh, be a Hilbert space okay I recall you by some previous definition that the sequence, the sequence of VK for k from one to infinity of elements of in H is a basis if for each uh, vector V belonging to the Hilbert space there exists a unique coefficient CK such that V could be written as an infinite com linear combination of VK uh, with CK as the uh, the prefactor of the vector which means that v is equal to some in some way some per k from one to infinity of ck vk so we find the ck and we, we got the infinite linear combination of the vk so this is the definition of the basis so we say that the vk is the basis of h so now there is a problem how can we find the coefficient ck right so the goal here is to introduce an autonomous basis where ck can be found explicitly so definition, so the vectors, the sequence of vectors, the vectors VK from K from one to infinity form an autonomous system. If and only if the inner product between VK and v, v, VG is equal to Delta KG, where Delta KG, you know it very well, it's the, the chronicle symbol, uh, which is equal to one if K equal to G and it's equal to zero if K different of G, okay? So it simply means that VK, the inner product between VK and itself, VK is equal to one, and VK VJ with J different of K is equal to zero. Okay. So definition now, a basis, basis set of EK from K from one to infinity is called an autonomous basis if the set of the EK from K from one to infinity is an autonomous system. Okay. So let uh, the set of EK, K from 1 to infinity, be an autonomous system. Then the following conditions are equivalent. So we have three conditions, I, double high, and triple I, okay? All these conditions are equivalent, and we are going to demonstrate. 
this later after so saying that the set of ek k from 1 to infinity is an autonomous basis is equivalent to say that v can be expressed as an infinite linear combination of ek such that such that v is equal to, to the, the infinite sum from k going from zero from 1 to infinity of the inner product of v the vector v and the, um, the ek which is the the, the km element of the basis on the direction ek okay whatever v belonging to the albert space to a vector space albert space is a vector space right and this is equivalent of course the first one is also equivalent to this so uh, saying that or that is equivalent to saying that the inner product between v and w is equal to the infinite sum k from one to infinity of the product of two inner, inner product the, the first inner product uh, being the inner product between the, between the vector v and ek and the second inner product being the, the inner product between ek and w okay whatever v and w belonging to our hilbert space to our spaces right and this is also equivalent i mean either i or, or two i or three i is equivalent to this for is equivalent to say that the the, the square of the norm of v is equal to the sum for k from one to infinity of the absolute value of v of the of the inner product between v and ek at square. Okay, but this is also equivalent to say that v is belonging to h and the inner product between v and ek is equal to zero, whatever k uh, natural number, then v equal to zero. Okay, so. I, I, I put four, five affirmation. Okay, this is the first affirmation, the second one affirmation, the third one affirmation, the fourth affirmation, and the fifth affirmation. And I'm going to say that all of these affirmation are equivalent one with with another. Okay. So uh, for autonomous basis, we we know how to choose the coefficient c k and proof. We are going to show now that i imply 2 2i that imply 3i that imply 4 uh, that imply 6 that imply 2 okay and this we will say that they are all equivalent so i imply 2 is okay okay it's uh, there is nothing uh, special to say that it's not a normal basis it means directly this okay then uh, 2i apply 3i so the other product between v and w is equal to the inner product between the infinite sum of k from 1 to infinity of the inner product of v and k on ek basis and the vector w but uh, by the linearity of the scalar product okay we have an infinite sum a scalar product of an infinite sum we can get out the sum and this is equal to the sum of k from 1 to infinity of the inner product between v and ek multiplied by the other product between ek and w because this is a, this is not nothing less than a number the scalar product okay this is to scalar to number okay so now let's let's demonstrate that three imply four okay so let's demonstrate that this imply this okay so we take for that the the norm the square of the norm of v which is the inner product of v with itself okay which is the sum for k from one to infinity of the inner product of v and ek multiplied by the inner product of ek and v okay but at the end this is the the product of v and ek by multiplied by the complex conjugate of v and ek i did not put the sum here so at the end which is the which is the norm of v and ek so this is equal clearly to the sum for k from one to infinity of what of the pro of the the the, the square of the, the the absolute module of the inner product between v and ek okay so now let, let's demonstrate that force implies six okay so we have the inner space that say that v the inner product between v and k equal to zero, whatever k. Then by force we have that the the, the square of the norm of v 
is equal to the sum from k from 1 to infinity of the absolute module of v and the k at the power of 2, which is the sum from k from 0 to infinity, because this is equal to 0 of 0, which is 0, okay? So now let's prove that 6 implies 2, okay? But we have we only have that uh, the set of EK for K from 1 to infinity is a basis. If V belong to H, <coughs> V can can be written as the sum for K from 1 to infinity of V of the inner product between V and EK along the, uh, the the vector EK, and this is convergent series. Okay. Consider now F belonging to N, we can consider the inner product between V minus W E I and E G, e -G which is, so uh, I use the linearity of the scalar of the inner product, which is the inner product between V and E G minus the inner product between W and E G, which is the inner product of V and E G minus the sum for K from 1 to infinity of the product of, of, of the inner product between V and the ikai multiplied by the inner product between ikai, I forgot here, uh, parenthesis, and e. So at the end, it's, this term doesn't change. It's also it's always the inner product between v and e j minus the sum for k from 1 to infinity of the inner product of v, g, e, g, multiplied by ikai, e, g, and this is equal to 0 for k different of g, okay? So at the end, it's equal to the inner product of minus v, e, g, it is equal to the, to the, to the opposite of the, the, the inner product between Vg and Ej, which is equal to zero. So V minus W is equal to zero. That is V is equal to W is equal to the sum from K value to one to infinity of the V, v scalar Vk, the inner product between V and Ek along the vector Ek. So now we need to show that the coefficients are unique and uh, <clears throat> we need to show that V is equal to sum for K equal to 1 to infinity of ck vk which implied that ck is equal to the inner product between v and ek and i let you this as an exercise okay so it's all for this video uh, on the uh, function spaces and inner product it's a video full of example it's not only theory and uh, believe me it's very useful in quantum mechanics if you're doing uh, some uh, quantum mechanics stuff that's the reason why I wanted to uh, to set the basis, the mathematical basis of functional space, Hebert space. Uh, I think I will go ahead in the next video with some lessons about the Fourier series. Okay, that's all for this video.